ago, a man was traveling along a riverbank in southern Iran. He saw something glistening. It turned out to be a priceless vase from ancient Persia. The discoveries at Giroft are astonishing in terms of the, the quantity and quality of materials that have been excavated, mainly illegally, unfortunately. This amateur footage shows what happened next as hundreds of treasure hunters swarmed over Giraffe. They dug up buried riches, ancient art that made their finders fortunes. But some now think what they discovered was much more important than treasure. The frenzied prospectors had actually revealed relics from a lost city. Had these people inadvertently found the birthplace of human society? If they had, it would go against conventional wisdom. It's always been thought that civilization started in either Mesopotamia, now in Iraq, or in the Indus Valley, now in India and Pakistan. But legends speak of an even earlier kingdom called Arata. No traces of it have ever been found. This film follows the archaeologist given the task of excavating Giraffe in search of this lost realm. His job, to assess the evidence and perhaps reveal a mythical city, the capital of the kingdom of Arata, the first civilization. As soon as I read about it, I bubbled over with excitement because I think this could be the biggest archaeological story in my time. Giraffe, where the treasure surfaced, is on one of the most used heroin routes from Afghanistan. Experienced smugglers quickly converged on the town. For a handful of dollars, they were able to buy objects for which Western art collectors eagerly paid hundreds of thousands of pounds. An entire year passed before the Iranian authorities grasped the scale of the traffic in relics. Early in 2001, the police launched a major operation to shut down the illegal trade. One arrest alone led to the seizure of 200 items. But who could identify the stolen goods and assess their value? The authorities sent for Yusuf Majitsade. For the professor of archaeology, the summons was especially sweet. In 1984, he'd been accused of being a counter-revolutionary and forced to leave the country of his birth. Eighteen years later, Professor Majitsade was the one man from Iran with a detailed knowledge of ancient Eastern art. Even he was totally taken aback. The first time when I saw these objects, I had almost a heart attack. I had a heart attack. Oh, my heart stopped. It was not easy to trace the source of the items. Looting had been widespread. 
poverty meant that whole families turned into grave robbers. This morning the schoolmistress asked me for 10 pence for fees. I just don't have the money. The professor faced some huge challenges to get the local people on his side, to discover what lay beneath centuries of mud, and to find clues to an unknown ancient civilization. He had a checklist of things to look for. Had the mysterious people built large buildings? Was there any evidence they had farmed, proof they kept animals or grew crops? Did they engage in trade? Had they left records of transactions or traces of writing? And did their works of art contain clues, signs of a culture rich in images and stories? He had a long wish list one that initially looked doomed to bitter disappointment. It had taken the Iranian authorities several months to regain control of the region. When at last the professor arrived, he discovered the robbers had laid waste to whole cemeteries. He found huge numbers of graves had been plundered and emptied. Large numbers of people had been buried here. Who were they? How developed had their culture been? The stolen grave goods offered few clues, wrenched from their owners and their surroundings. It was pillage on a scale which was every archaeologist's worst nightmare. Archaeologists are always unhappy when sites are looted because it means that objects are taken out of context. Culture without context, I think, is, is the key phrase there because we have the objects, but we've no idea what they were associated with. We have lost uh, a great amount of information, not only the objects, but lots of information. We don't have any skeleton, any bones that we can study, nothing at all. We don't know who they were. We don't know what was their relation to one another. We don't know their diseases. We don't know their religion. Sad, very sad. The three largest looted cemeteries were close to each other. Overlooking them was a pair of mysterious mounds. Their surface was littered with scattered shards of pottery, 5,000 years old. The mounds themselves were exceptionally large. Professor Matizade had a hunch they held a secret, but even he who believed in the ancient kingdom of Arata could not have foreseen what they concealed. High in southeastern Iran is a major archeological discovery a hidden valley where conditions are ideal for civilization to have appeared. And it sits halfway between the two traditional cradles of civilization. Mesopotamia, now in Iraq, and the Indus Valley, reaching up into India and Pakistan. Western archaeologists had paid scant attention to this 400 kilometer long strip of land. Just one small mound had been partially excavated. Here, barely 30 kilometers south of Giraffe, where the valley is at its widest, destitute local people had unearthed the most valuable cups and vases. The motifs etched in the soft stone were not just outstanding examples of skill, they also offered a sudden solution to a mystery that had long baffled scholars. 
Professor Majid Sade was well aware that fragments of objects with similar designs had been found throughout the ancient world. A thousand kilometers distant in Mesopotamia, in Oman on the Arabian Peninsula, along the banks of the Indus, even as far away as Afghanistan, the professor knew that their source was an enigma. The sheer number recovered in this valley and their similarity allowed the professor to solve the riddle. The pieces had to have come from here at Giraft. And to his delight, they surpassed Mesopotamian art. I cannot explain how exciting was seeing those objects. For the first time in my life, I was seeing something which was against what I had learned all through my life in archaeology. I saw something which doesn't exist in Mesopotamia, much more uh, elaborate than Mesopotamian art. The professor was forced to an astounding conclusion. The treasures must have come from an earlier civilization, one more highly developed than Mesopotamian society, perhaps from the very kingdom of Arata itself. The first human civilizations appeared about 5,000 years ago in the Middle East. The first cities, the first religions, the first kings, a radically new form of social organization. And then writing, which took man into history. The 20th century archaeological digs established Sumer in Mesopotamia, today southern Iraq, as the unique home of this revolution. But in the year 2000, a treasure surged up from a valley lost in the mountains of southern Iran. Magnificent stone vases bore witness to the presence of another cradle of civilization no one had even suspected existed. The oldest Mesopotamian legends had indeed evoked an ancient kingdom called Arata, protected by high mountains. But no archaeologist had ever found any trace of it, and for some, Arata was nothing but a myth. The Chlorite Vases It's a step construction, but it's, it's huge, it's gigantic, gigantic, 400 meters by 400 meters. In Mesopotamia and Elam, pyramids of this sort have been discovered on numerous sites. We believe that they were religious monuments. In Mesopotamia, they're called ziggurats. But the oldest yet found dates back to the end of the third millennium pre-Christ, and none have a base longer than 120 meters. With the first level at nearly 400 meters long, this one would be several centuries older and significantly larger than any of the other known constructions of this type. This gigantic city, emerging bit by bit from the ground, was the center of a vast kingdom that prospered here 5,000 years ago. An enormous missing piece in the great puzzle of the origins of our civilizations. This is a civilization totally was ignored, totally was forgotten in the, uh, in the history. And now it's coming up little by little, little by little, it's just emerging from the, you know, from the shadows coming up. That is magnificent. This discovery turns all of Middle Eastern archaeology upside down. That is the entrance because on the, on the right hand side uh, you see the, the facade of the entrance wall. Apparently the entrance was turning a little bit uh, about 90 degrees uh, in a curvature you entering inside this construction. This year we could penetrate about 20 meters or 15 meters inside this uh, gigantic building. The one who lived, uh, built this one and lived in this one, in this monumental uh, architecture, 
uh, was not an ordinary, uh, you know, person. It was a higher class, a ruling class, maybe the king, maybe the king of uh, Arata. This edifice was an enormous citadel comprising two levels. This architecture, exceptional for the period, almost certainly inspired the motives on these vases. And for the archaeologists, it's one further proof demonstrating the degree of sophistication attained by this civilization. Among the seal impressions, Holly Pittman finds new proof of the originality of their talent. To her great surprise, she finds a type of motive she's never seen before. This is a very highly developed style with its own iconography, its own forms. And in my opinion, um, we have two or three master craftsmen who have um, tremendous imagination and who are creating images that are just full of life and vitality. The style of these seals, as sophisticated as that of the chloride objects, demonstrates the extraordinary creativity of the artists of the Halil Valley. For Professor Majid Zadeh, this exceptional talent might be one of the keys of the influence that this civilization exercised over its epoch. You have never seen elsewhere in the entire region their imagination, their the artistic value they have used on this. You know, when uh, a merchandise goes from one place to another, even today, the ideas goes with it. Some of the recurrent elements in this iconography seem, in effect, to illustrate legends that we see appearing much later in Mesopotamian imagery. The legend of Etana is only documented in Mesopotamia at the very end of the third millennium BC. It tells of how a serpent finds revenge against an eagle for devouring its young. The reptile is advised by a god to hide in a carcass to surprise its enemy. I mean this representation of a cow and an eagle attacking and confrontation between two snakes and one eagle. It came to my mind, this must be a story of Etana, 600 years ago, 500 years ago, before Mesopotamians represented on their seal impressions. Likewise, the Gilgamesh epic, perhaps the most renowned Mesopotamian legend, there is the character of a scorpion man guarding the mountain entrance to the land of the dead. But in all of Mesopotamia, only one image has been found representing it. In the Rood Valley, the Scorpion Man appears on dozens of different vases. For the professor, all these signs suggest that this culture developed before that of Mesopotamia and that it could have influenced the latter in many domains. When the results from the site's geophysical readings arrive to Eric Fouache, the professor's intuition seems to be confirmed. We can see quite clearly here in red and brown a bedrock, which is the topography upon which the people of Konar Sandal first settled. Whereas we've got a dozen meters of deposits on top of it, which are very probably, in their entirety, archaeological deposits. About a meter down, we see the appearance of geometric structures that couldn't be anything other than walls. And at two meters, we can see that the anomalies aren't arranged in the same manner. That shows quite clearly that we've got several generations of remains, and hence an ancient foundation for this site. The ground underneath Kuna Sandal might well enclose traces of occupation long preceding the most ancient Mesopotamian remains. The geomorphologists told us 
We have about 12 meters of cultural deposit uh, below the surface. Therefore, it's not 5,000 years ago they settled here. Maybe they settled 10,000 years ago. We don't know yet. This discovery is only revealed at the very end of the 2005 campaign. On the site, nearly all the trenches have been sealed, with the exception of Mr. Soleimani's at the palace entrance. And it's there that an incredible dramatic turn of events takes place. Hi, Doctor. Professor, we've just found a piece of baked brick here. Could you come over? On this piece of baked brick, the first discovered on the site, there are clearly carved out characters. There is no possible doubt that it's an ancient inscription. Hmm. Give it to me, please. Is it you who found this? That's very good. Thank you very much. Everyone had hoped but never dared believe that they'd have it in their hands. This civilization had also invented a form of writing at the dawn of the third millennium BC. Right on the top, on the latest layer, we have this writing. And as I said, we have 12 meters of cultural remains below this. And uh, chances are we find earlier version. And uh, you never know, one day maybe writing begins from here. Um, I don't, I'm not claiming anything, but uh, I mean, you never know. Uh, really, it's frightening. Uh, I don't dare to say what changes this site is going to bring because no one will believe it. Celebrating the return of 5,000-year-old ancient relics back home, Iran's president and cultural heritage officials unveiled some 18 historical artifacts, which had recently been taken back from a gallery in Britain. The items belong to the Jirov civilization, which formed one of the most mysterious chapters of human history in southern Iran. They were smuggled out of the current city of Jirov between 2001 and 2004. But these relics will help further complete a part of the puzzle which already exists about the Jirov culture. We already have a variety of objects from Jirov in our treasury. These artifacts belong to the people of Iran. The more items we have, the more we will be able to study the Jirov civilization and introduce our ancient heritage to the world. Many archaeologists regard Jirov as the first cradle of human civilization. Historical remains and tablets show a civilization at least 300 years older than that of Mesopotamia and the Ganges River. The art of Jirov is unique. By looking at Mesopotamian artifacts, we come to many questions and ambiguities. But the art of Jirov is outstanding. It pursues a special school of art which shows the artists followed specific principles. 